Hey guys, so I've made a couple other videos on swing techniques for the Indian clubs and for the Persian meals and I figured not, uh, why not just keep it going and um, do one for the gata, for the mace. So uh, I'm going to go over, you know, how to swing it properly. You see a lot of people doing things incorrectly out there these days. Um, so I'm just going to clear some stuff up and and uh, show you guys how to swing how to swing properly for um, upper body strength and mobility and joint health. And uh, by swinging them properly, you maybe get a little bit stronger, be able to go up and wait. So um, so yeah. So the first thing I'll do is show you guys what I see most often. Um, online, on Instagram, on YouTube, on different uh, different areas of uh, social media that, uh, you know, the stuff that I see that's that's not the, the right technique. So I'm going to show you guys the incorrect stuff first and then I'll go over what was incorrect about it and I'll show you the corrections, um, the technique fixes to uh, swing more efficiently and uh, with less chance of injury. So uh, I'm going to show you guys what the improper version looks like. Just before I start, I have a uh, about 10 pound, this one's about 10 pounds here. I'm going to show you guys this one. I can't swing improperly with the heavy one because the way that I can get the 30 pound mace up and around my head is by swinging it properly. I couldn't do it otherwise. So I'll show you guys the improper way with the light one and then when I'm showing you guys the real, the right way to do it, um, I'll use both. So here we go. Okay, so what was going on there was, number one, I was holding it too far up. My arms aren't relaxed. When you're swinging a mace, you don't want it, and of course it's going to feel like exercise and it's going to feel like work, especially when you get up to the heavier weights, but you don't want it to feel that way, especially with the light, the light weight. You want to stay as relaxed as you can in all the places that you can. Um, I was very tight. I was holding my hands up too high. When you want to be swinging, you want to have your hands nice and low, relaxing your arms, letting the weight kind of bring your arms down, um, just in a nice relaxed position. So that's where you want to start. Um, fuck. William. So, uh, lost my train of thought. Okay. Holding it nice and low to start. Um, the second thing is, and these concepts kind of go, you know, across all spectrums of swinging. When I have that weight behind me, I don't want to have my, my forearms up this far away for my biceps. I want to let my triceps relax. So when the weight's behind me, I want to have my hand down pretty close to my mid-back. Uh, when you keep your hands up here like this when you're swinging, 
you like just like the hands having them low to start. You're not letting your your arms relax. You're not letting your shoulders relax. You're not letting your grip relax. Um, you're staying really tight, and that just can kind of put undue stress on the shoulder joints, on the um, the elbows, on the wrists even. So when you're swinging, you need to let you need to let that tricep relax. You need to let the bicep relax. You need to let the grip relax. Um, swinging is mostly, I feel, a more internally, that's where the strength is coming from, the core, the inside of your body. The arms are just like ropes. Um, it's almost like in Olympic lifting. You're not pulling with your arms too much. It's all in the hips and the back. And that's kind of where the strength with the May swinging is coming from. Um, all from the abs and, and the back, getting that weight up and around. Uh, other than that, when you're um, with breathing, breathing is very important when you're swinging. Ideally, you want to keep the mouth closed and breathe from the nose. Uh, a breath in as the weight goes over and back. And when you're pulling that weight back over, that's when you're breathing out. Breath in, breath out. And that's how you should get your breathing. Uh, other than that, I'm going to start, uh, I'm going to show you guys the right way to do it now. And um, try and notice the differences between the first way and the second way. The other thing is, you always want to do with one side what you're going to do with the other. So you bring one hand over, over the first to start, switch hands, right over left, left over right, and switch directions. Don't get caught up on doing the same motion over and over and over again without switching to the other side because as good as swinging things like this is for your body um, it can create imbalances so I'm going to show you guys the right way to do it now and uh, I'll come talk about the, uh, the differences between the two I'll show you with the light one first and then I'll go to the heavier one and they'll look about the same I'm just going to do some 360's and that's about it So, as you can probably tell, I looked much more relaxed, I felt much more relaxed, keeping my hands nice and low in the, uh, the starting position, and letting my hands drop nice and low behind my back when the club was behind my back. Uh, and that's just going to make for a much smoother, more meditative swing, um, staying relaxed. So, I'll do the heavier one, and uh, you guys will see, it'll kind of look about the same.
so there you go. Kind of messed up a little bit on those first few swings, but I'm not used to doing the 360s with the big one. I usually just keep it to the 10 to 2s. It's hot out here, so I'm sweating like crazy. Anyway, so as you can tell, a lot of these concepts transfer from the maces to the meals and to the Indian clubs. The number one thing is you want to keep it relaxed. You, uh, you want to try not to tense up too much. It's supposed to be a meditative practice. And um, when you swing them right, that's where you start to make your gains. Thanks guys, and I'll see you next time.